Welcome to a new video and the first in a new series. I am still quite new to this hobby and I am continuously learning new things as I observe the life within the glass box. This series is going to be a short look into my beginner's thoughts and experiences on the pets I am keeping. Today's video is on the assassin snail. I am going to be completely honest and say I didn't even pay attention to snails for the longest time and had no interest in them. That seems to partially be because of the snails that I am used to seeing. I mostly knew of bladder or pond snails, ram's horns, and I would occasionally peer at the mystery snails in the stores, but didn't give a second thought to them. I understood having snails in your aquarium could be beneficial in many different ways, so I had just let some bladder snails stick around and monitored the population by plucking them as they surfaced for air. I have even named one of the ram's horns I have had right from the beginning, though I don't know where it came from. And then my pest snail population began to grow a bit larger than I would like. After looking around online, I found the assassin snail. Though I believe I overpaid a bit for mine, I picked up two of them from a local fish store for my 10 gallon tank. I did make the purchase knowing these snails weren't wizards that were going to make pests disappear, but along with surface plucking, even just two have made a noticeable difference in the bladder snail population. Each one can usually eat two smaller bladder snails each day. I also just liked the look of these snails to be honest. I prefer the snails with the cone shaped shells, and the yellow and brown striping of assassin snails definitely caught my eye. Even for a beginner, I would say these snails are easy to care for, though they are carnivorous so you do have to make sure you have enough protein for them to eat, which was not an issue for me. This also makes them great for planted tanks as they have no interest in eating any of your leaves. These snails also like digging and will bury themselves for hours, leaving just their siphon sticking out of the substrate to breathe, and will wait in ambush for an unexpecting snail. Because of this, it is best to have a finer substrate to help make it easier for them to dig. Another bonus in my opinion is they do not get very large, only about an inch in length. I liked this as I didn't really want a snail that would look out of place being too large compared to my nano fish and dwarf shrimp. Bringing up the shrimp, in my experience, there is no issue keeping assassin snails with neocaridina species, ghost shrimps, or bamboo shrimps. Most of the time, they don't even acknowledge the shrimp are there, though this could be different if there was less pest snails for them to eat. Even then I wouldn't worry as assassin snails are quite slow. If you do happen to see them eating any shrimp, there is a good chance the shrimp was already sick or had passed away before the snail even found it. Something else to keep in mind about assassin snails, they are not a hermaphroditic snail species, so if you are planning on breeding, you will need to get both a male and female, which could be a bit tricky as there isn't really any way to tell the two apart. I got lucky with this and am eagerly awaiting the first assassin snail eggs to hatch. If you would like to see future updates including the baby assassin snails, why not subscribe to the channel? Most of the time you probably won't even notice these little guys are there, but even as a beginner into this hobby, I feel these snails still make a great addition to almost any tank, and even if you are like me and don't care about most snails, these ones might just deserve that second look. 